check it out guys, new map pool, October 19th, it's coming. Now I've heard, and people in chat can verify this, as I'm, I've literally just seen this news, it's been, I've turned my stream on, people have posted this in my Twitch chat. Apparently this is a typo, and it's actually still a seven map pool. This isn't in there, is, is apparently what's there, let me see. I don't know if this is gonna, people like, what, eight, eight, eight map pool, eight map pool, eight map pool, eight map pool, eight map pool. Everyone said apparently that's a that's not meant to be there. Beckett is removed from the pool. But essentially, guys, the only maps that are saying is Blackburn and 2000 Atmospheres is what I've been told. Other than that, we have Berlingrad, Stalingrad and Berlin combined, Curious Minds, Glittering Ashes, Hardwire LE, Pride of Altaris. Six new maps all at once. And it's coming out in just one week from when I'm when I'm looking at this or just under a week. Um, so this is going to be awesome. Uh, we've also got 2v2. I don't know if those are any of those are new maps or if they're all the same. None of this says new. So it looks like the team game maps maybe aren't being touched. I don't really care, honestly. I think I'm fine with team game maps. I think team games are so varied as it is. I guess there's times where I get annoyed when the maps are too pocketed. Everyone's combined, too hard to attack. I prefer the, the team game maps that are a bit more open. I don't think most people that play team games like that, though. Most people want their black forest kind of, you know, they want their arenas, their their Age of Empires style maps because Starcraft's already brutal enough. <laughs> so guys, let's take a look at these maps. So we've got main base, main base. So the first thing you want to think about is what is the most direct rush path? Now, as far as I can tell, that is walled off completely. It's, it looks like there's mineable minerals there. People in chat maybe can confirm if anyone's checked are they five minerals? Is it one worker trip? 10, 15, 20? How many trips is it? Does anyone know how much those minerals are? Let me know. Uh, we've got... Uh, I don't know if this way or obviously you could also go kind of that way. These are kind of the... That last one seems a little bit roundabout. <laughs> but probably something like this or this. These are kind of the, the direct routes into each other's natural. Now that's that looks like just a site blocker there. So <clears throat> cool. Um, so the next thing, other than that, seems like a medium rush distance, fair enough, is let's actually look at the expansion pattern. Now obviously you expand here. And a lot of the time, the maps these days, you've got two options. You either expand in the triangle third, fourth, and you kind of go down there. And by expanding here, you're kind of protecting your main from drops at the same time, right? But at the same time, as you take these bases, you can always get a little bit more abused by air, right? So what do I mean by that? I mean like, okay, so you've just taken your third. They can come in here with like a liberator, and then you pull all your like queens or stalkers or marines down to deal with it, and then they pick up and they just go into your main base. And the same could be said for a warp prism or a marine drop or anything like that, right? So you've got to be more on top of kind of splitting your anti-air between like here and here to actually make sure you can defend these two bases. On the other hand, the front is a little bit more compact. Usually uh, you can kind of centralize your forces around this area for the most part, and it can work out pretty well. And then as you get this fourth base, you always want to invest in some static along this edge. And that way, if they try to fly through into your main, they lose their drops. Missile turrets, spores, cannons, whatever it is there. And then this is the other drop angle that you've got to worry about because often your main army ends up trying to control this area, right? You're trying to fight for the middle. Their base is there. You guys are like big, bleh, big fights going on over here, which means that naturally the flank ends up being the back of your natural, right? So that's something to keep in mind. Now, what's the other expansion pattern? Well, <clears throat> the other one is to expand in a straight line along the edge of the map. Now, this is usually what I prefer to do, but you can do a bit of both. So often, right, as a Zerg player, especially in Zerg vs. Terran, I like to expand to both sides and have the flexibility where if I fall a little behind and I can't defend a push, I give up the side they're pushing on and I put my drones on the other side and I focus more on backstabbing and counterattacking. So if I take these three bases, I can take fourth there and fifth here. Terran pushes this side. We scrap this base, give it up. Transfer the workers to the fourth. We take an extra base up in the top. Or vice versa, right? Where we're like, all right, we're taking this one and this one. Terran's pushing up here, has this brutal tank spot with tanks behind this terrain. I just cannot get rid of it. Give up that base. 
transfer the workers here. Take this base. <clears throat> so that's generally what I'm what I'd be looking at. Um, in terms of the main base, we do have massive dead space in the main, right? Or massive space, sorry. There's a big area of dead space as well where air units can kind of idle. Looks like air units can probably hide in the back there, possibly there, possibly there. Um, doesn't look like there's necessarily a pillar above the natural. There probably is maybe here for overlords to sit and have a bit of a cheeky perv on you. But I'm not 100% sure. They might not actually have it there and it might just be the pillar here. So in, in modern maps, a lot of map makers are doing this thing where it's like, hey, you can sit the Overlord on this pillar, but it can get spotted from the high ground. So the Overlord maybe has to sit right on that corner. And even then, if they get a longer range vision unit, like an Adept or a Hellion, it can stand there and a Stalker or a Marine can kill your Overlord. We'll need to go into the actual maps and test it. Is this new map Blizzard or fan made? Um, I don't think Blizzard's made maps for years, um, as far as I know, guys. So the map pool has been sourced from the community for many years. Blizzard realized nobody liked their maps. They got too much hate for it. They wanted to outsource that hatred to the community, um, which was the way to do it. So let's just kind of, first of all, send our worker across the map, <laughs> see where it goes. Second of all, no, you can. That's not high ground, guys. None of this is safe for an overlord to stand on. Oh, there's nothing. Maybe this? Maybe this pillar? Nope, you can see on top of that as well. Oh, there's. Okay, here's the pillar. I like this, guys. Check it out. So, check it out. There's a pillar here. So, an overlord can sit there, but it's not going to see even units moving out that way. So, it's a really shit pillar. Like, yeah, if you're just running back and forth with Hellions, like, it gives a good amount of vision. But it doesn't see the gases for free. Yeah, they could get an overlord back there. But if it's back there seeing the gases, it means they're also not seeing the front. So Zergs are going to have to invest a little bit more in that vision. And I really like that. I always think in general, that's What's a good way to do it. On? Now we can see the push path. It's pretty cool there. Obviously, someone else can measure the time if they want. Normally, you measure it like ramp to ramp or something like that. I mean, we can measure it now. We leave the ramp at a minute 20. We can see when it gets to our ramp. I think that's what they do. They don't measure natural to natural, do they, guys? It's main ramp to main ramp. I actually have no idea how they measure rush distance. Because normally we say number of seconds, and it's how long a worker takes to walk from base to base. <clears throat> and I know the second value is like 31, 32 is very, very fast, right? Um, seconds. Um, 35, 36, 37 is, is a bit longer. So this was a minute 20, and it looks like we're going to hit 30, 31, maybe 32 seconds. Um... So let's say about 32, at most 33 seconds there. Medium, short to medium rush distance map. Okay, is what we call that. Um, lots of space behind the minerals, which means liberators aren't going to be able to abuse you. Plenty of space to get back there. But like I said, lots of dead space up here. Lots of dead space up here. Um, oh, that's interesting. There's like a little valley here. Um, we've got a reaper ledge there for reapers to jump in and out. And there's also a ledge here which reapers can jump in and out, but a very narrow one both easily blocked right that's easily blocked this one's a bit harder to block but you could do you know pylon gate cybercore or something like that to block it off which would be really cool submarine was 33 seconds says bread so sneezy oh good really okay so this is this is pretty short then this rush distance good to know but yeah no pillar except the one way out front um so if you want to see both the gases and there you're gonna have to do both it's very hard to like spy into the base for free um giant main base so if you come in with an overlord from like a real normie angle over here a single marine's gonna kill you well before you get to the back of the base so people are going to be doing more of like what you see on romanticide guys where an overlord comes along the top of the map and then comes in from like the surprising angle up here or comes around the back of the natural sneaks along the edge very early and then comes in from here to try and see oh is there a fusion core or something like that what's going on and guys i have to say this map does get my stamp of approval because there's doggos. Now that is not Rufus, you can see. This is a nice kind of orange coat to the dog, but nonetheless, this gets my big, big approval. Anytime there's doggos on the map, I get really fucking happy about that. Can the worker go through the valley? Uh, I don't know what that means. What, the valley? I mean, okay, these, these minerals, by the way, five minerals. So these are so easily opened up. So you can actually make it. Oh, with two workers, you can very easily open up an even quicker rush distance path. All right, so we're going to measure that rush distance path in a moment. 
Oh, this valley? Right of the main. You actually can't go in there. So it's cool. Oh, there's a fence. Okay, so there is a fence. Wait, can you blink over it, though? Can you get in there if you drop or blink in that, guys? That seems like something you could, because... No, you can't. Okay, no, no, that's... Oh! No, no, no. You can't. You can't place anything in there. So that's that's all impossible terrain. Don't worry, it's all, it's all complete dead space. Good to know. All right, guys, let's do a measurement one more time. So we're going to leave at 435. 435 from the top of our ramp. So if you open these two minerals up, which means just bringing two workers out pretty early, right? One to there. Wait. That doesn't even speed up the rush distance? Oh, it doesn't even speed up the rush distance. He literally went around. What? <laughs> 435. But he will he will still get there slightly faster. 30 seconds. Maybe 31. So if you take those those Maybe minerals down, it is defeated. very, very quick. That's fascinating though, that it didn't actually take that path. I wonder if you mine the other minerals out, will it go there? Yo. Maybe it's because I mined the wrong minerals. I don't know. <laughs> What's going on? Wouldn't it be funny if we found out that workers that are carrying minerals go slower because it weighs stuff, guys? All right. Mineral field so, depleted. 535, let's go. Gotcha. Does he go through there now? <gasps> he does. So you've got to mine out that mineral, guys. It's more important to take out that mineral than that mineral, right? So likewise, if you're on the south side, you want to take out the mineral that's on your base's side of it to quickly get from base to base. So that's just a little little tip. If you guys want to open up just one of the mineral patches, if you're on the bottom, you open up this one and then this one, right? So you, you always open up the one that's away from the debris to, to get the fastest possible path. Good to know, good to know. Cool map though, guys, really like it. Let's check out the other ones. The next one is going to be Curious Mines, um, which looks pretty cool. Okay, very nice. Can you cannon rush here? Um, no idea. Yeah, that's that's not for me to discover. I'm not an expert. <laughs> I haven't been doing many cannon rushes for quite a long time. Oh, there's little Roombas on this map, guys. Okay, so your main's a lot smaller. Big dead space to the left. Um, do we have Reaper Ledge? Looks like a big... Look at that, guys. That's a big Reaper Ledge. So they can jump up anywhere on that angle, and then they can run down here and then jump up there as well. Of course, you'd be able to wall that off, I think, quite easily with just a, probably a depot and a barracks or a gateway and a pylon. And then I think you can probably jump up there, but that looks like a doodad blocking it. Probably there and there. Um, natural expand. Once again, decent space behind the minerals. Not as much, but decent. We've got a pillar right above the natural. So this has got more of the classic pervert pillar on it. Go ahead. Um, let's click across the map, shall we? And uh, Go ahead. Okay, so you can take third we'll and then fourth in the corner of the map. This is a pretty small map, guys. This is actually a pretty small map. Third and then fourth. Um, oh, I'm pretty wide open on that base. So this base out here is super in the open, guys, right? So Terrans might take this just because Terrans like attacking a lot and it does have a ledge above it, right? So a tank there, a tank there. You could always like run the SCVs, lift the command center. Tanks on the high ground kind of cover you. But that's only if you're really confident, right? If you're playing like Zerg or Protoss and you're defending against Terran, then that's going to be an issue. People were asking about the, the mineral count on the minerals earlier. Yeah, it was five minerals, guys. Nice and easy. So this base, because look at how wide this angle is, right? Whereas this base up here, Especially with the rocks up, you've got a pretty narrow choke point. It's almost oxide-esque. And now don't get me wrong, this is a pretty big area between, but it's still kind of oxide-ish, right? Because you've got such an easy to defend natural ramp, you can defend that with not that much. And then definitely this is the safer third in general up here. What's going on? Now, that being said, if you're playing, say, Zerg yeah, vs. Terran, yeah. watch out. TBT as well. If tanks get wedged down here, they are in range of a gas maybe in range of one mineral patch as well and they can elevate up there so expect terran versus zerg to come around the very top of the map and try to get some tank siege there maybe boost them in in medevac sometimes would be cool um we've got watchtowers What's on this map 
I do like that Watchtower is pretty much never dominating the center of the map these days. Um, it's it's kind of nice. It means, yeah, you actually need to try and fight for vision of the map a little bit more. They still see a fair amount, but they don't see the very edges, so you can still go around them with drops. So they give you a good bit of vision, but not an immense amount. So these are sight blockers. we got sight blocker there, sight blocker there, sight blocker there, sight blocker there. Oh my lord, talk about it. Guys, there are sight blockers everywhere around these watchtowers, which means controlling the watchtower, very important in these areas if you're fighting around there, because there is so many watchtowers. Um, there's also a hologram of a Zergling there, which was cool. Synthetic DNA restoration something something. Yeah, uh, overall looks like a pretty standard map. Nothing too wild here, I don't think. Giant rocks in the middle. Destructible rocks, guys. Giant destructible rocks. And uh, it's also got a big circle of sight blockers as well. So as long as those aren't taken down... Yeah, your units are going to go around. I'm not going to check the rush distance on every map. That would make this video too arduous. Go look it up on Reddit. I'm sure somebody's already already gone and doing the maths, right? Someone's going to do the homework, so I don't have to because I'm a lazy piece of shit. Um, where is your FPS ping overlay? Guys, control alt f You can turn that on and off at any time. I only want that on when I'm actually playing the game and I want to check what server I'm on. <laughs> Do rocks have the same HP and armor? Go ahead. Um, it should be the same as always. 2,000 hit points, 3 armor is standard for destructible upgrade. debris. Complete. This is a 32 second rush distance map, chat's telling me. Oh, thank you, mate. Um, can the cleaner bot block you from building a command center? No, 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 no. Bo bots can't block you from building anything. I'm pretty sure in StarCraft 2 that can never happen. They saw Brood War and were like, oh. oh, so this is actually a double rock, guys. It's a double rock. It's two destructible rocks next to each other. I mean, he's on the ramp, so I can't build on him because I can't build on a ramp. But yeah, should be all good. Cool. All right. Nice map. Not bad, guys. Let's take a look at the next one. Pride of Altaris. So once again, guys, where the fuck are the green maps? Seriously, what is wrong with StarCraft nerds? This is how I know StarCraft map makers are those kind of people who are like, I don't like sunshine, sunshine, grass, or flowers, or anything that is alive. I'm like, Gah, guys, can we fucking... Can we fucking maybe just like have some greenery on our maps? They're like, oh, but there's a patch of grass in the middle. I'm like, yes, a bit more than that, please. And they're like, no, I don't like grass. It's bad. Like, Jesus Christ. Um, I have one request aesthetically on all my maps. I want grass, trees, sand, sunshine, and doggos. Is that so hard? But I'm an artist pig, I can't just bow down to what you want with the maps. I need to create something new and fresh. No, you don't. Just doggos and sunshine and trees and flowers. You fucking Jesus guys. Come on, mates. So this one's gonna be Pride of Altaris. So we've got this big valley in the middle, this big green valley. What is this feature in the middle of this map? All right, guys. First things first, we've got what looks like a pillar there. Yeah, so we got a pillar there in our natural. This looks like a much bigger map. You can kind of tell just by looking at the mini map that things look a lot further away, right, guys? So we're going to have natural there, third there, fourth there, fifth there. Now, the reason why this probably wouldn't be a fourth, guys, is look at how hard it is to get up there and defend it. It's kind of like a bit awkward. So I imagine a lot of players will expand in the straight triangular pattern or they'll take third here and then fourth down here, something like that. Now in the middle of the map, we have a watchtower with like a giant line of what looks like sight blockers, but this is all impossible? No, that, that whole thing is impossible. Oh, so you can control the watchtower, but you actually can't cross through the middle, guys. There's this line of weeds that you can't cross. Oh, this is very cool. So this is Pride of Altaris, guys. That's the name of this map. If you guys ever don't know the name of the map, click the alliance menu, top right. Same if you didn't catch your opponent's race on the load screen. You can always see your opponent's race, and you can check the map name. Um, so you can control the watchtower, but you... Oh, no, you can. Okay, you can just run straight through it. Never mind. I was hoping... I was like, that would be a funny feature where you're, like, standing on either side of the watchtower, but to get at each other, you got to go all the way, like, around. But uh, no, no, no. You can go straight through the middle. Never mind. <laughs> um, cool. Okay, giant. Yeah, it's a giant map. Very tall as well, right? So... I think it's attractive to expand down here 
because that's naturally away from your opponent since it's obviously much taller than it is wide it's, it's width not as big so i think expanding down here would be important we've got one two three four five six seven eight eight gold patch double base oh hello oh Hass and bly already both have bonus guys because they're taking this as their natural every game let's take a look at that Half patch, full patch, half patch, full patch, two full gases. Oh, that's a juicy base. So you guys will notice that a lot of the time gold bases only have like a single gas or they have six mineral patches. There's, there's often something like that that's kind of crazy. Um, people have also pointed out there's 18 bases on this map. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine nine bases on each side that's crazy so for contrast romanticide has how many does romanticide have guys 16 14 how many bases does romanticide have um which is our biggest macro map at the moment which is of course going to be removed with this so this definitely could lead to some big games um definitely some wide open spaces down the middle once you break these rocks down you're going to open up some big paths through the map of course and um other than that i don't know man uh, 14 question mark 2000 atmospheres has 14 big bases to small bases romanticide has seven on each side i think the chat's saying okay so 16 on romanticide okay so 16 on romanticide and 16 on 2000 atmos but two of those are only four mineral patches one is it it's a rich gas right I think it's four mineral patches one rich gas i believe either way let's look dead space we've got a little bit of dead space there um Mm, a, kind of a bit you could fly along the edge there i think you can fly along the edge a little bit but obviously you'll get shot by turrets and stuff as you do so definitely none of these maps seem to have like a romanticide type full bubble behind the natural there's a reason why romanticide is the best kind of air map guys it's because you can and drop maps because there's, there's this huge window behind the natural where you can just fly in without getting shot and get straight into the main base and you can do the same on the this side as well now this this one does offer you dead space to fly into that third and then rotate into the main over here but uh yeah over here you would be getting shot as you're flying in but it's it's a little bit of dead space right it's a little bit it's not too bad big map looks pretty cool can't wait to try it out guys um oh there, there is some nice little waterfalls so for for those who are like pig what the fuck are you complaining about dude okay there is like a beautiful little fountain and stuff with some nice plants I just wish there was more of this. Give us more of that. <laughs> I don't want this shitty Protoss, Protoss tilescape everywhere. This stupid pylons. Um, <laughs> Alright. Cool, 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 cool. Next one is going to be Glittering Ash. So we've got lava on the outside. Another barren shithole of a map. Um, so apparently there's only three choke points to defend early. To secure five bases on that last map. Milo points out. So... A lot of people in chat are saying that's going to be three hour games on that map. It's going to go forever. It's going to be really turtly. I think there's still enough avenues to kill each other. Um, it didn't look quite as turtly as like Romanticide. So I think Romanticide is so hard to kill each other. Is it the first time there's eight maps? Uh, that was a mistake, guys. So there's a lot of people tuning into chat. Apparently Beckett is not going to be part of it. I, I This is what I've been told, guys. I don't know where that's... Where was that confirmed? Colossus says, no, no, that's a mistake. Yeah, I've been told that by a few people. W did they just say that in the comment? Comments of the thread? Or, like, how do we know that? So, guys, we're going to go into Glittering Ash. we got some nice lava all over the edges, which is fucking cool. Some gold minerals being processed. This is the dwarf map. <laughs> all right, so we send a drone over there. First of all, um, not much space in the main. Terran players... Are gonna be so fucking pissed off guys this is a terrible main base for terran i mean you can fit a pretty big row of structures up here giant reaper ledge so i guess that's going to appease terran players right it's a giant reaper ledge it's huge this little line here kind of makes it look like there's a height difference there but there's not so um yeah as a terran you're gonna need to put like barracks here and some stuff there and there's no space for a third command center in the main maybe you can barely fit one up here so people are going to be pretty triggered by that terran players are because there's just not much space for your buildings and your buildings are going to get destroyed by tank pushes here so tbt guys is going to be a war of if you get your tank sieged here arguably in any matchup even against protoss and zerg if tanks get sieged here they're going to reach so far into your main base like in TVT, people are going to be boosting a tank across and sieging it there. And if it gets up, 
I guess it's not in range of these first couple structures, so mm, maybe it's not that big a deal. Maybe it's because normally the problem is that it, it hits the first couple of structures, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Anyways, my drone goes across the map. You can see the path that it's taken here. And um, I love that there's giant gold minerals everywhere. It'd be funny if there was actually no gold bases on this map. So that is a six mineral, one gas base. So there's a six mineral, one gas base on each side, kind of a shit base. I'm looking at the most exposed bases. None of them are actually gold minerals. This is such a meme on a map that's covered in gold minerals just for the doodads and the aesthetics. There's actually, yeah, none of that. Um, oh, people are pointing out proxy void ray there would be really annoying. The batteries there and the void rays like in your main killing your shit. Oh yeah, that'd be pretty powerful for sure. Um, are these ladder maps? They will be in one week's time, guys. Let's kill this stupid robot. I don't like things being clean. I'm a drone. Anyway, natural third base. And then if you want to expand in a line along the map, like I was talking about earlier, holy shit. Yeah, you're not going to do that, guys. So even if you do want this third, which is already quite a distance to, though it has some big wide open spaces in front of it. So even though they could put tanks there, there's like really easy to flank them. Whereas the other third base is also reasonably wide open. Um, push path from the left. But anyway, I think more common probably to see a third base there, fourth base here. See that kind of more triangle style pattern. And, uh, and then it's kind of push up to the top side of the map and secure all these bases. Or you could take this middle base, but obviously quite exposed. So there's a very common dynamic here. High ground on your side, then you go low ground. Then there's this like high ground ridge line through the middle of the map, which has kind of become a feature of almost every map in, in the last two years is like have low ground, high ground, then low ground, then a big high ground ridge in the middle that especially in like TVT, you see giving some pretty big advantages, then another low ground and then their high ground. So it means the the start can be really good. Um, the, the, the positioning on the middle of the map can be nice. Overall, a pretty big map. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine bases a map. So once again, lots of bases, which is interesting, guys. Definitely these maps could go pretty long. But this one is very wide. So I think what would have been really interesting on this map, personally, because you guys know I love movement, is I really would have liked these bases to be a bit more safe, the ones going along the flat line of the map. And the reason I would like that is it would force, the players would be incentivized to go out and then it would be like, oh shit, a drop in your main is so far from your fourth base, right? Or your third or this, you know, that sort of thing. Whereas because players are incentivized to kind of go in a more of a triangle formation, it's going to mean there's less drop fronts on the extreme flanks, which to pull players around. Now, obviously people can still dart in down the left flank into the main base. People can still dart in around behind the natural or even past the natural and right up into the main. Huge dead space. Look at all this dead space, guys. This is where you want to build spores and turrets to make sure drops and things don't go past into this fucking area. There's going to be oracles hanging out behind people's bases. We might see someone try and build a tempest, get it back there, running in one shot workers. Seems like a pretty cool map overall, though. I like it. We'll see how it plays out. Void rays will be too far away from the ledge and the command center, says Grimmy. So even though shield batteries here, it looks good. If their production is down here and here and the command center is there, it's too far away. So you won't actually be able to hit their important structures while healing. So Groomy's kind of pointing out, no, nah, you'd still need to come build your shield batteries at the front here, try to get them here. Actually, shield batteries there would be pretty good. Your void rays pretty much hitting the command center while getting healed. So shield batteries on the front with the void rays would be pretty good, right, Groomy? Yeah. If you can get up in the natural, it would be fantastic. Terran's very unlikely to let you get away with it. Yeah, I mean, you'd probably still start with the Stargate here, I would imagine, and then just try to rotate down there, right? I don't know, something like that, but it, it wouldn't be as powerful as some of the existing maps. Main, natural, third, fourth, fifth, or fourth, fifth, maybe? Hmm? Potentially, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or just like I said, you know, both, fourth, fifth, kind of something like that. Um, I think people will probably be tempted to do these ones, but either way, past your fourth base, you're definitely stretching out a little bit. Look, you're gonna go around the terrain to get there. 
Gonna kind of get quite far down there. These are these are getting spread. These are getting really spread thin. Let's go in game. Take a look. And this looks like another map with quite a lot of bases and stuff on it. Let's take a look around the natural. We've got a big thick Mommy. pillar there that spots both the gases and the front of the base. Yet another really good pervert pillar. Like I said, not my favorite guys, these pervert pillars, just giving the Zerg free vision. I don't mind the one that's like far out the natural. You know, like this one. I don't mind that. It's just uh, not the biggest fan of like the Overlord just getting full vision. Because I feel like Overlord's usually going to see a lot no matter what. For those who don't know, Overlord's one of the highest sight range units in the game. It sees very far compared to a drone. So if you see how far he, he sees, now look how short a drone sees. It's like, I think, three or four range difference, something like that. So Overlord can already see pretty pretty far. You can take a pretty direct route across the map. Some nice red grass. Here. Are we in? Are we in an Oblivion Gate? Is that what this map is, guys? These plants. I, this, this is making me thinking where. Are we in it? Yeah, we're in an Oblivion Gate. Fucking Daedric princes around and shit. Definitely, yeah, for sure, man. <laughs> Anyone else get that vibe from all like fucking red grass and weird little stubbly volcano plants and shit <laughs> blood it's all blood grass right <laughs> cool um so are there any gold bases doesn't look like it no mineral wars no gold bases uh okay that's kind of lame only one gas on this base where were sorry i'm blind there's two gases on every base never mind guys it was literally just off the screen uh, not every single base is completely normal. There is no bonus minerals, nothing like that. What are the critters? Once again, cleaning bots. So almost all the maps have cleaning bots. And that's why our first map wins, guys. Our first map is probably the prettiest, right? And it has um, doggos. And it has a mineral block. It's like got all the cool features, you know. Overall, pretty cool map, though. Um, you've got these ledges in the middle that can definitely do some stuff. Let's Let's tab back out to our drawing board. You've got these rocks. Opening those up gives you a lot more options because otherwise it's just these are the these are the two paths. And if you want to go around the outside, check it. This is all obstructed, guys. That that this is all obstructed. You can't you can't move through here. You can't move through here. Now, obviously that's a lot of noise, but why am I I'm pointing that out because if you go around, you kind of got to go all the way around to there. Or if you go around, you got to go all the way around to here. Now, that's that's a lot of noise, so let me just get rid of all these little kind of drawy drawers. So, this path around the outside. But it's hard to just quickly cut back in, right? So, if you go around the outside of this map and say a TVT, and then you see your opponent's kind of pushing in hard, it's going to be... You can't just quickly cross back to get back to the center of the map. Especially when the rocks aren't taken down. If you're too busy going around the outside, it's, it's actually very hard to like get back between your opponent's army and yours. So just the architecture of this map tells me if you're in a lurker versus lurker game, a tank versus tank, tank versus lurker, disruptor versus disruptor, what, why am I mentioning those units? Because they're all the same. They're giant splash damage siege units that are very positional. Same with lots of liberators, right? Same sort of scenario. So if you're in any sort of very positional battle, you're going to have to be very wary with the architecture of this map because it's not that easy to move around the map even once the rocks are taken down you've still got big obstructions all along the sides so you've really got to kind of pay attention here to the fact that your army doesn't get caught out now obviously once you can do things like you know pick up and drop in the main could be really good down there um but yeah generally speaking these armies moving along the flanks are not going to have the most avenues, right? If your army goes down there and they they block you here with something, you kind of just have to go uh -huh, back up here. And even there, you've you know you've got quite a few. Eh, from there, you can open your options up, but it's not too easy to rotate between your paths. Ah, once you're on these extreme flanks, so these are kind of like corridors that you won't actually see get used too much. But when they do, it's like. Quite a commitment. It's going to be more a little drop, a little squad of zealots, a little zergling baneling run by is running along those those little edges. If you see a whole army moving along there, it's a pretty big committed maneuver. Could pay off though. So um, it feels like, once again, a map where I don't think... Oh, okay, no, a tank. If you get a tank there, very good for TVT hitting that. 
Uh, likewise, if someone wedges tanks here, with, again, Zerg or Protoss, and then drops Marines up, it's going to be really hard because the minerals are creating a natural barrier, right? We've seen that on a few of the maps in the current pool. Think Jaganatha. If someone gets their tank siege behind those minerals on your the base below your main, it's like ugh, Oxide as well. Same sort of thing, right? So this is going to be cool, though. Overall, um, we've got these ledges. Once again, like I said, there's like your, your initial high ground extends right through to the center of the map. And then there's these low ground areas, but it's it's kind of like high ground back to high ground. And then it's these uh, extreme flanks. So let's go back to our drawing really quickly. Why not take the fifth up front? Then you're not going to be stretched out. Okay, so let's see. What, what do you mean by that? One, two, three, four. Instead of taking this one, you mean? You think take this base instead? So that might be a base a lot of people opt for. Like, especially if you're a Terran player and you're just pushing forwards actually so that's what's awkward right because terrans are going to want to take this as their third to push towards their opponent but actually with the natural push path being this way that's actually not covered by your rally unless you take these rocks down right and then you can kind of push this way a little bit more through your base so even terran players might be taking this a little bit more and then expand to the fourth there so it's kind of kind of covered by their army Right? Because once again, any counterattacks have to go all the way around this this side. They can happen, but you could just have like a widow mine there versus Zerg to see <laughs> whenever shit's coming your way, right? Split some units down. But yeah, you could definitely take this base. So there's a few different options for fourth. It's this one, or this one, or this one, all options. And if we think about it, say this is the Terran. We'll say the Zerg's down here, and they go one, two three, four, and as the Terran, you're like, oh, yeah, I want to push, I want to push this down. You might even want to push this angle, right? Because the Zerg can't flank you if they haven't taken these rocks down. They're going to have to go, <laughs> which is the most awkward flank of all time, right? So you can have kind of have like, whether it's a bio mine or a tank spread, kind of like leading up this ramp, and it's very much a, a one directional push, right? Where, yeah, it's hard for you to reinforce, but it's very hard for them to engage into. And the Zerg's going to be like, duh, fucking so hard to get up there, man. I can't flank that army at all, right? Because this whole thing, this whole flank is protected. And even if they take the rocks down, they, they open that up. It's like kind of hard to get around there because you're still flanking it from a very narrow ramp. And even as you're running around, it's like you got to be very careful to go all the way around or you're getting shot by tanks across this area. <laughs> And even there, is you're, you're going to go, uh, 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 come up all the way along here, hug the minerals, and then come in. So it's going to be kind of hard to flank and push up on that area. Aren't queen walks going to be a nightmare on this map? So queens could come right through the middle of the map. Um, I don't think it's a particularly short rush distance. I don't see any specific reason why queen walks are ever a nightmare, unless you're just being a greedy fuck nugget, to be honest. So... I don't know. Um, are Queen Walks ever that big a problem? No. If we can think about the current maps, Jagannatha, Lightshade, right? Yeah, these these bases are pretty separate. That's a very good point. I don't know. What's the rush distance? Did someone shout out the rush distance before? If so, please repeat it in the chat, guys. 36 seconds. So it's a long rush distance. Bad for Queens. But giant space between either there or there. Now, that being said, hmm... I'm pretty sure a Protoss player, guys, is always going to take this. If they're playing Void Rays, they're always going to take that third. Why? It's the same thing as we always point out, right? Which is... Actually, I don't know, man. Because this push path kind of comes from there. Oh, that's kind of weird, man. Mm. It's a little different because of the rocks there. So normally, like on Light Shade, right? Zest always takes the front base, but this is so far from your natural wall in. Maybe not. Mm, yeah, very good point, guys. Yeah, this is going to be very interesting, actually. Trying to defend with just cannons, batteries, and void rays seems like it'll be really hard here. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> Get fucked, stupid Void Ray battery styles. <laughs> 
Is the Reaper Ledge on this map large enough for a siege tank? Oh, shit. Mm, yeah, do you guys think this? I think there might be enough room there for a siege to ta a tank to siege. Well, if that's the case, that's going to get nerfed out really quick. So very good point from Colossopher in the chat, which I missed, guys. If a tank can siege here, or even two tanks against Zerg, and they're playing Ling Bane, have you guys ever tried to kill a tank with just queens, or two tanks with just queens? Disgusting. Disgusting. All right, chat wants me to build a tank. Chat wants me to build a tank. Okay, we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. All right, guys, so we're just gonna try and, um, I guess we just wanna get a, a factory and a tank up and just try and drop it there on our own one. So we're not gonna build SCVs here. Not Let's get minerals. gas first up. Not enough minerals. And let's see. All right. Guys, we're about to find out if this is the most overpowered Terran vs. Zerg tank spot. If there's one guy who's going to be spamming this every game on the ladder, by the way, 4GG, <laughs> right? 4GG and Beastie Cutie are both the kind of guys who will have the biggest erections. Yep. Yeah, you can fit two tanks there easy. Oh, this is so broken. That reach is way too deep inside the base. Yeah, you have to play roaches on this map, guys. Oh, Colossopher, did you think of this? Or did someone point this out to you? Can you fit three tanks there? I'll try. I don't think so, because they're, they're pretty chunky. Yeah, I don't think so. You can probably fit a few Widow Mines there as well. Yeah, because look, now I can't siege that tank, because their tanks are bigger when they're sieged. So let's try and put it up as far as I can. And there you go. Let me see if I can move this tank up. And look how re- That actually- Does that hit the gas? No. <laughs> it hits the gas. Oh my god, it even hits the gas. Look, you can hit the barracks there as well. Oh my- Guys, I'm gonna do this in TVT as well. Because SCVs can't surround it. I'm just gonna- I'm gonna put a tank there. So disgusting. So that should not be that big. Yeah. No. Alright. Everyone, clip this. Post it on Reddit. Let them know. Fix that shit. Because- uh, and and just so you guys know, if you're playing Zerg, make sure you open up with roaches so you have a few ravages to deal with this. Oh god, um, Colossopher, where did you where did you come up with this, mate? Was this your own idea? Are you a genius? Chat pointed it out. Okay, someone else in chat pointed it out, and you repeated it. Col you're the best, Colossopher. I should build a turret while I'm at it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I can put two, a widow mine on either side of them as well. But yeah, basically, guys, you do this, and then you drop eight Marines there. This will just be like an opening in TV, TVZ on this map. Is you just get two tanks, eight Marines, put the tanks there, drop the eight Marines, and your eight Marines just poke in and keep baiting them into the tanks. Hot damn. So you can see, obviously, we can't drop there. But uh, yeah, that's really nice. Um, just looking at the other tank positions, I guess, while we're here. Just for the more standard one, which I pointed out initially. So these guys are well in range of the add-on. Obviously, on the other side, the add-on's even more exposed. So these guys can both hit the add-on. Even the one on the left can hit the add-on. So very good tank spot here as well for TBT, just to hit the production. So um, yeah, it could be nice. I was also pointing out, of course, um, I was actually pointing out this position before, guys, where you either put them here or I think even here. Right. This is what I was initially pointing out, where I was like, oh yeah, against Protoss, right? You just siege like that. And then like two zealots can get through there, one zealot there, two or three zealots here. But you leave some bio here and you put a marauder there and a marauder there so the zealots can't get in. And you drop the rest of your bio up there and you just fuck up their main. So if they let you push this angle at any point, which I don't think they will, because I think they'll take this as their third, definitely that would be <laughs> a bit of a disaster, mate. All right, guys. So we've already found one broken spot. Well done, Twitch chat. Other than that, though, hopefully that gets fixed pretty quickly. Um, obviously, it's not completely broken, um, but it will be pretty heavily abused, I'd imagine. So if you guys reserve playing on the new map pool when it comes out next week, if that ledge is still that big, make sure you build some roaches to deal with it. Or you go like two base muta or something like that really early. Don't be playing a super macro mass zergling style. Or if you do and they abuse this, counterattack. Bane bust the shit out of them at home. Do not fight it. Give up your main base if you have to. So remember guys, don't build your tech down here. Build your tech up here. 
<laughs> in in the back of your bases, as I always... Oh, sorry. Don't build your tech down here. Build your tech up here in the back of your base, because otherwise, if you build your spawning pool and stuff here, they'll get killed. That's general advice for every map, but especially on this map. And um, give up your main base if you absolutely have to. Of course, you can veto it if you need to, but I think, I think otherwise, this is a really good map. Just a bit too chunky of a Reaper ledge. If they just make that one tile less i think it fixes it completely other than that guys hope you've enjoyed this first impressions just kind of meandering look through the maps and uh, i know it's kind of a long one but thanks for watching see you guys next time